The Australian Ghost Whisperer, with Katerina Legato and James Jennings. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us again, whether you're watching us on video or listening to us on your audio device. Uh, hello Katerina. Hello James, hi everybody, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. And um, the topic for this week's episode is we're talking about how to deal with coattail riders. Now, I'm not sure if coattail riders is a term that is particularly in Australian dictionary. or in the dictionary. <laughs> I think it is. Katarina hadn't heard it, but I, I've, I've not heard of it. I feel like it's common enough that I've I've uh, I've busted it out. But if you don't know what the term means, explain it to people. I'll do that. <laughs> so, if you're a coattail rider, you're essentially trying to latch onto someone else's success and let them carry you forward. So it's the whole idea about, you know, someone's going somewhere and doing something and you're hooking onto them and trying to catch a free ride off, uh, off their success or whatever they're doing. Mm. That's, that's it in simple terms. So I think it's pretty common. I think it's pretty common for um, people to try and maybe jump on the train um, if, if you're going somewhere or you're successful or you're li you live your life in a certain way that they might aspire to. Mm. You can find people kind of like, I guess, latch on like, uh, leeches is a pretty harsh term, but like, you know, like little leeches just kind of like sucking onto you and, 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 uh, and, and trying to, you know, get a bit of your energy. So, and the reason I wanted to talk to you about it, Katarina, because from a spiritual perspective, you see things from an energetic uh, perspective. What do you think is going on? And is there a way to deal with people like this? And do you see people like this in your life? Mm -hmm. I think people like this often that um, feel that they don't have the energy within themselves to create their own reality. So they look at somebody else's reality and go, okay, I want a piece of that. So what do they do? They, they will latch on energetically to that person. But by doing that, they're going to tell that person, make them believe that they are, you know, you need me or I'm good for you or, I, you know, if I, if we can do this together and it'll be even better. So they, they're going to have to find a weakness in the person to actually be able to latch on to and make that person who is successful, who's on their path, make them believe that, you know, I can be of a benefit to you. Otherwise, they're not going to have an entry in. So it's always about being able to find an entry or a weakness in a person to be able to say, right, I can kind of feel what, you know, if I can kind of hook on to this person, make them believe that, you know, they need me, then they're going, then I'm going to get that free ride. Because what that person is saying actually is that they're insecure, that they don't believe in themselves enough to be able to believe that they can create their own reality mm. or they can be jealous of someone else's success. So they're going to kind of want to go, well, maybe I can take some of that for myself. Mm. It could be a little narcissistic also. Um, and, I, and I think jealousy is a big thing too. I think people, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are very jealous of other people's success and People who are successful are often people who have focused, who've put a lot of energy into their success. Um, they've probably made a lot of sacrifices to achieve the success that they have. That they, And so often you'll always have these people around these successful people who kind of, you know, they don't feel they don't have the power to create it for themselves, so they'll want to latch onto these people. Mm. You know, I remember when I started doing this work, you know, there were so many people showing up. Oh, you know, maybe, maybe I can, you know, do this with you or do that with you. And you know, it's you just have to learn to have those boundaries and say no. I remember even you know when I started out, kind of coming out, doing readings more publicly. You know, I'd have girlfriends come over. And they barely, you know, had said hello to me. Mm. And they'd be sitting, they hadn't even sat down. They'd, oh, you know, this happened to me. Oh, I met this guy. What do you think? What do you feel? And they just wanted to, a free reading. They yeah. just wanted to, you know, exploit my gift for their benefit. They didn't really care about me. Mm. And so throughout my life, I've had to really be careful of that because I have had so many people that just want to exploit me for my gifts. It's that plain and simple. They just want to kind of use and abuse or have a free ride off my back. So it's hard because sometimes, you know, we we kind of, you know, we're good people and we just see the good in everybody. Mm. But um, unfortunately, not everybody's like that, hey? Yeah, that's, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. And, um, I, and, and 
think what you said is is right. It's it's if you people have a special gift or a mm. talent, it seems to be obviously far more pre prevalent. Mm. And uh, I, I just thought of examples in the creative sphere. So I think artistic, creative people. I'm not going to stereotype here, but I would say that they're probably more open, trusting types mm -hmm. of people, which probably makes them easier targets for these vampiric people, or people who want to hook in and ride on the coattails. So they, they are potentially more easily exploited. And uh, what popped into my head is that like some famous musicians. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at Elvis and, uh, you know, uh, Colonel Tom Parker, who was his manager, was kind of oh, like famous oh. for basically looking after himself and e exploiting Elvis. Uh, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. Um, I know there's a movie about it, but he was like in a really dark place for years because this, I think he was either his psychologist Sad. or his doctor, um, basically saw the weakness there and latched and controlled yeah. his entire life for a really long period of time. And he was just obviously trying to get the money and, yeah, the, and the accolades that came from being associated with, with Brian Wilson. And uh, well, he just was drained of his life force. Yeah, that's right. But people like that will try and drain your life force. And your life force is the energy that you've used, that you have around you to continue to, to be successful, to use your creative talents and gifts. So these people will try and suck it out of you because, mm. again, they don't feel they have it inside of them. And money's always the big thing, yeah. isn't it? I think, you know, people that um, are very successful often are quite prosperous and so they're, they're easy targets for people who are looking to make money um, on the back of somebody else, yeah. somebody else's success. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So what, what, what helped you over the years to sort of, I guess, uh, differentiate between people who were there because they, they loved you or your friends or whatever. Mm. They were there for authentic purposes. Yeah, that was some years ago. So I began to wake up to it because I began to sort of realise like these people are only just friends are coming over, so-called friends were right. only coming over when they needed anything. Right. You know, they weren't there when I, you know, if they didn't need something, you'd never hear from them. So mm. I, I, I learned in, early in the piece that I needed to form incredibly strong boundaries and learn to say no mm. or, you know, cut cords with these people because mm. they were just there because they would want to exploit my gifts. Yeah. Yeah, but Rather I, than supporting me and saying, yeah, hey, you know what, I do want a reading and I do want some guidance and how about even though you're my friend, I book in and support you and, yeah. you know, what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, people, there's a lot of very, um, yeah, what, greedy. I think they're just greedy people, hey, mm -hmm. greedy. And they obviously... Um, they're users. Yeah. I don't even know what a nice way to put it. They're, greedy. <laughs> they're users and they just are out there looking for people that they can exploit. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, a, a fair and equitable relationship is where I guess there's an equal amount of give and take. You know, mm. it's like, it's like, you're, it's there's a flow between people mm. which is on an even level, mm. but if the if the take if there's way more taking than giving, mm. or you're the one doing all the giving and they're doing all the taking, then that's mm. when you've got to kind of snap it out and go, well, wait a minute, this is this isn't a fair equitable relationship. This is off balance. There isn't a balanced transference of energy. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. all there's the you know there's the giver and the taker, and obviously you know takers will always look for people that are the givers because they know yeah. that they're going to be much easier to exploit mm. um, rather than a nice balanced energy of give and take. But it happens a lot with children too, doesn't oh, it? You find God, it, yeah. you were finding with your daughter that she's being exploited at the moment by other kids because she's so talented and creative absolutely absolutely so it happens in the playground at school it does it starts young like you know mm. um yeah as you said like she's a she's a, a really creative kid very sensitive kid and a giver you know she's got a big mm, heart is, and yeah. uh but look i guess you know i guess she's lucky she's got us to kind of help 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 uh give her advice and guide mm. her and she's also very not to diminish her she's an incredibly smart kid as well so she sees these things herself um, so she knows, she knows to protect herself, but she, mm. even at her age, she's starting to go, wait a minute, mm. I'm having these creative ideas. There's other people who are latching on and trying to take credit for it or look like it was their idea. Yeah. And they're trying to push, they're trying to sideline me. They're trying to push me to the side and act like they're the one at the center of all these mm. cool things. But the thing is, is like, 
I know that she doesn't she doesn't do those things for the glory and like look at me I came up with your idea. She it's this just comes who, naturally, it's who flows she is. naturally for from her. Yeah, it's, that, it's who she is. It's who she is. But but the other person they are doing it for egotistical reasons. They want to be the centre. These kids, yeah. yeah but like this, this is also learnt behaviour. These kids have learnt this behaviour yep. from the, their parents. Maybe their parents are like that. They're, it's narcissism they're those too. Those are people that go out just. You know who they, what they can take. They're here to yep. see what they can take rather than what can I give. Yep. So what can I take? So they all, you know, they seek out these people who are very giving and loving and talented, and just go right. You know, there's a nice target. And I'll just go after that person and and ride off their back or take their ideas. Yeah. Or, you know, exploit them for money or for energy or whatever it is. Yeah. Exactly. Or hang out with them, be their friend because it's really cool if I'm their friend then I'm gonna look super cool exactly exactly I think exactly. you've got to be very wary of people like this and, oh, God, and yeah. even you know in in the school grounds of kids like this because you know they can be very upsetting for your child mm. if they are incredibly talented in whatever you know way and mm. they've got other kids trying to kind of rain on their party yeah yeah, yeah exactly and um, look you know, I, I've always been um, quite protective of her because of her mm. big heart. And, and I know, you know, big hearts are the ones that are easy targets for, mm. for, for, for people who uh, are takers. Mm. Um, but to her credit, like she, as I said, she's mm. really, she's getting very good at identifying people yeah. like that now. And, um, and, and, so and she knows how trick. to protect She's herself. She's learning early in age, yeah. yeah. And I, I always know. see I it always. Then. I see it kind of like there's always leaders and followers. You know, yeah. there's people, these creative, successful people, often leaders, they've just led themselves, they've created the reality they want, and I'm sure they've put a lot of hard work into it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these people who are the followers. That, yeah. oh, they follow and look for people that they can latch on to to take their life force from them mm -hmm. rather than they do the work. They're looking for a quick way to to, to get in. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Aren't they? Exactly. Just kind of a shortcut. Like, I don't, I don't want to put in all that energy and, you know, to become my own version of my own success. So I'll hook on to someone else and, you know, try and create a shortcut of doing that. Yeah, yeah. But look, in, in terms of protecting yourself from that, I mean, look, obviously... Uh, watching out for the warning signs mm. um, is 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 the most obvious one. But um, one thing that I've spoken to my daughter about, and um, and I would probably suggest this as well, is like is be careful who you share your ideas with. Mm. Um, if you are a creative person, make sure that if you have ideas that are important and valuable to you, don't share them willy nilly because there will be people who are like. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's that's now my idea. Yeah. And so my advice to her is like, I know Lily, it's hard because you're an open person and and uh, and you, and you like to give and you like to share. But I'm like, I just don't think you can tell this person your ideas anymore. I think you're going to have to um, rein it in a bit. And uh, which is really unfortunate because it's not natural. It's not a natural state to 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 be secretive and kind of keep that stuff mm. to yourself. But I'm like. Um, if you keep doing it, they're going to keep taking it. So don't give them the fuel. Don't, yeah, don't give them the, the, yeah. the food. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, just be aware of the leaders and the followers and see, you know, and, um, you know, I think if you're very successful and you you've, you need to hang out with other people who are successful because they're not going to have anything that they want to exploit or take from you. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah. 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 True friends, but people that, um, you know, be aware that there are a lot of takers and, users and abusers out there too unfortunately who will look to latch onto your energy and make you feel like you need them or make you feel like you owe them um you know they make put false ideas into your mind and sometimes these ideas can even be unconscious where you mm. don't realize that they're projecting you know you need me or i'm good for you so that they can find their way in yeah and exploit you yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, you just gonna. This happens in the workplace quite a bit. Oh too. God, yeah. I would say it happens like majorly, massively yeah, in the workplace. Yeah, with clients. Yeah. Yeah, people working. stealing ideas and stuff. Do you yeah, get that? a lot, a lot. Yeah. Well, mm. they're working really hard, and then the you know other people are getting the credit for the hard work they've done. Mm. Mm. 
So it's kind of prevalent everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to be quite alert to protect yourself. Obviously, it's probably harder in the workplace when you've got superiors who are further up the food chain mm -hmm. and, and they're skilled at um, manipulating situations so that it looks like they're the ones who are doing the work or are coming up with the brilliant ideas. You know, um, very competitive in the workplace too. Yeah, such a you know, there's so much competition about who's better than somebody else. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is like to be aware of is like if you find that you are particularly talented at something or you're finding uh, newfound success, you know, always be very mindful about the people who are there for you and supporting you before that came along mm. and who, the people who just loved you and supported you just because that's what they do mm. and the people who Good suddenly enough. come out of the woodwork and are like oh you know i want jumping on the gravy train as the yeah. saying goes there'll always be a lot of people coming out of the woodworks when you do finally get to that level of success that want to jump onto yeah your train and kind of take a piece of that action yeah. from you so yeah it's about keeping your energy protected mm. and also you know remembering that you know to always maintain very strong boundaries around you mm. so that you you know you, you're not allowing people to just come in and and vampirize your energy take your energy mm. for their benefit mm. Yeah. And this is all self-love, self-respect. You've worked hard to achieve a, a, a certain, you know, status or, you know, success in your life. And, yeah, there's going to be the wolves out there that want to take that, yeah. take a piece of that action from you. Absolutely. Do you think it would be worthwhile, like, even just if you're going to be going into an environment where you know you're going to be around people like that, just imagining you know, a force field or a barrier around you, an energy yeah. barrier, which kind of like, yeah. it's like, you know, like solid glass. People can't, people yeah, can't. However you want to see it, or mirrors mirroring out, you know, mirroring away from you, people's mm. negative thoughts or jealousy or whatever they're feeling around you, you know. Just, yeah, the more you, you maintain that shield of protection around you, the harder it will be for people to latch on, um, to you and and influence you influence you in a way that you know you feel like oh you know i need to have this person in my life for whatever reasons when really you probably would you know if you've got that force sort of protection around you you're like well i don't need you you mm -hmm. go create your own show yeah yep mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely i remember i just remembered a classic example of someone trying to I don't know if this kind of fits the coattail rider thing, but it's definitely someone who was a user that I had to block. So there was a, a period of time where I was working for a high profile magazine and I guess my role wasn't junior, it was kind of more mid. Um, and there were other people who worked for the magazine, other writers. And there was a particular freelance writer <laughs> who was incredibly dismissive of me and like, it's almost like, I felt like he looked down on me, wasn't particularly friendly to me, just was very kind of like, just a bit of an asshole, really, <laughs> for, for no reason. Just like, beep, beep. yeah, um, just basically just thought I was beneath him. Mm. Anyway, I got promoted. Wow. And I got given a role where I would be the one who decides which freelance writers would be used. Mm. And guess who all of a sudden turned into the nicest person in the world? Oh, mate. Oh, good to see you. How you been? <laughs> da -da. Like night and day. Of course. And I was watching this guy going, how dumb do you think I am <laughs> that you've treated me like I'm dirt? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I've got, I'm now essentially your boss. <laughs> And you're treating me like I'm your best mate. And, it's, and as he was doing this whole, like, you know, spiel to me about, like, oh, how you been? What's going on? I'm just thinking in my head, you are never writing for this magazine ever again. Good for you. And you got he, rid of him. I did, yeah. Mm. I didn't give him any more work because, well, look, the thing is, is, like, you know, you can be a bit of a, an a-hole and might be a brilliant writer, maybe you'll get work, but you'd want to be pretty good to be a bit of, a, bit of an a-hole and get work. But not only was he an a-hole, he wasn't that good of a writer. So it wasn't like a, it was a big loss. It was just like, see you later, pal. Mm. So anyway, not quite coattail riding, but definitely someone who's trying to latch on to your success. Yeah, and many like, reasons for people to want to latch on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you just got to recognise it and not 
not even allow them to upset you actually feel kind of good about the fact that they want to ride on on the back of your success yeah like, it's flattering it has flattering, quite I guess. flattering really and um and just say no just say don't no. create your own thing you know i think we're all very creative beings you know you just got to do the hard work yep that's it. it took me many years to get to where i am and lots of hard work and yep. sacrifices and you know writing my books while my friends were off at the beach and having a great I was inside writing my books mm. focusing it, it took a lot a lot of lot of strength and clarity and focus and hard work yeah and you could yeah, making sacrifices and absolutely and that's absolutely. it if you want the rewards you've got to make the sacrifices yeah. and do the work and um yeah I don't like it when people try to latch on to me and kind of go oh well maybe you know I can hook up with you and Oh, I think you know, you, you, everybody's got their own talents and I think you've got to go out there and, and explore what those talents are and yeah. not be afraid. Absolutely, yeah. To, to create your own successful story because everybody's capable of a successful story. Yeah, You've just got absolutely. to go out there and believe in yourself. That's right. So go out there, blaze your own trail, watch out for coattail riders, don't let anyone latch onto or try and steal your success. And if you're someone who does that, just don't. You know, yeah, believe in your own. Exactly, believe in your abilities. own ability. Yeah, yeah do definitely. do the work, and it will be infinitely, infinitely more rewarding when you're the one who's done the work, and yeah. you're the one who put in all the effort to make your dream happen. So, mm -hmm. you know, get out there, do it, make those dreams happen, and uh, be be good to each other, as as always. That's it. <laughs> okay, lots of love, and please share our videos and press hit the like button. Indeed. And if you've got any comments or want to, you know, drop us a message, please do that as well. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye, everyone. To gain access to private spiritual development classes, guided meditations, and live Q&As with Katerina, please visit www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash The Australian Ghost Whisperer.